The game we're going to uh, demonstrate today is called Food Force 2, and it is actually um, a game that's designed to educate and motivate people to solve world hunger. The aim of the player playing the game is to create a settlement and make it self-sustaining in terms of nutrition, housing, health, education, and training of the villagers that are in that village. So um, it teaches a number of really, really important skills um, and it allows students to really work on a number of critical thinking and higher level thinking skills. They get to work on strategy. Um, figure out in ways to, to sustain their development of their village. They work on trading, things that need to be traded, what's valuable, what's more valuable, and at what times. They also develop an, a sense of what how technology is being used and how technology can allow for techno, uh, can allow for improvements and upgrades to the village. And crisis management, sometimes something suddenly happens and they have to deal with it on the fly and make some changes to what's going on. So. Um, that's a really, really important skill to, to learn as well. And finally, collaboration, um, especially if the students are working in groups. And this game lends itself really well to having at least two people working at one time, one person manning the mouse while the other person is looking over the whole screen, especially at the indicators that sort of keep track of how the village is doing um, and help sort of shout out what things need to be done in what order. Um, and it's a really great opportunity for students to do that. So we're going to take a couple minutes and go through the guide, which is a really great way to sort of walk through how this uh, village scenario is set up. And this is something that the students get to do as well. It's a really nice tutorial before they jump into the game, which moves at a much higher and much faster pace. So you are in Gokul Village, and you're joining Food, for food Force so that you can um, basically keep that village healthy and sustainable. You can grow food, buy food, trade goods, meet the basic needs of the community of food, water, and shelter. Okay, so you're going to be making sure that certain living conditions are up upheld. Houses, one house per family, sanitation, farm, that you've got good drinking water. All of those things you can build houses, build farms, build wells, build schools, build hospitals. Those are all things you get to do during the, the game. So your community involves the workshops, schools, and hospitals. Those are important things that in the game will tell you if some level is dropping off um, that you need to make an improvement. If, if there's sickness you know, arriving, you need to make sure you build or maintain or upgrade your hospital. So some of the resources that the students will have access to are food, water, medicine, books, tools, and construction materials. They need to, um, they, they actually produce food and water in the village. They then turn around and sell that at the marketplace to get medicine, books, tools, and construction materials. They can also have a workshop which allows them to make their own tools and construction materials, but it's often faster to buy them at the market selling things that they have in their village. So food is broken down into rice, fruits and vegetables, um, and then you also have beans, sugar, salt, and oils. So basically you tend to be selling your rice, fruits, and vegetables, um, and sometimes your beans. The sugar, salt, and oils grow much more slowly, so they tend to be the ones that if you need them, you're going to buy them at the market by selling one of the other items. Water, you have to make sure that your well has a, uh, your village has a well and that it is working. Uh, and if your village gets larger, you may need a second one. You purchase medicines, including vaccinations for the children in the village. Um, and you make sure that your hospital has enough of those medicines. You purchase books for your building that is your, your school. You can't have your school without books in it or you will suddenly have no education um, on your indicator bar for that and you could end up ending, losing the game quickly. Tools and bricks are what's needed to actually build any of the things or upgrade any of the things that you want to. So, um, so let's go through and take a look at some of the, the beginning tutorial. They really walk you through it nicely and it, it really gives the kids a, a sense in a very slow pace to understand what they need to do step by step. Okay, you have two choices of stories. We're going to go with the Gokul Indian Village, but another option is the, the Haiti earthquake. They take a scenario of you are going into a village that has been decimated and you're helping it to rebuild. So in this case, we'll, we'll choose the Gokul Indian Village. 
In this beautiful country, there is a Gokul village. The village Gokul is governed by Kamat, who is a the Sarpach head of the village, but Kamat is growing old and needs a successor. Can you, his younger son, take on the responsibilities of the village and make the village prosper? So then you have a little conversation going on where the son is going to take over the role of the father and the father is going to teach him how to do that. And that's what this tutorial really helps the kids do with the, in the first steps. So it says, build a hut to shelter the people. You can build a hut by clicking on build and hut. There we go. And then there's your market over there. You can zoom out using the scroll on your mouse. And then your current objective here it says, when you build a hut, some bricks, some amount of your resources are utilized. So it tells you what you need. And this is why it helps to have more than one person keeping an eye on, on things. Because you've got to keep track of your manpower, your resources, and then, of course, the progress bars. These are the all important. Once they drop down below a certain level, if you don't get them up immediately, then you basically have lost the game. So let's try building another hut. Okay. All right, so we've done that. Try building another hut. All right, so we've got it now water, most basic, here we go. Water, the most basic necessity of life, we need to get a well. We've got all these um, homes and we need to make sure that we have water for them. Let's see, let's put the, let's put the well over here. So, and again, this is at a much, much slower pace than the game actually moves, but it allows the students to sort of get the hang of what they're doing and understanding everything that they're reading on the screen. We need food, so we need to build a farm. You can actually raise and lower your levels here based on what you think is most important or something that you need at that moment. And let's see, we'll put our farm over here. build another farm. Let's put this one higher in beans. Oh, to build a school. Okay, so let's put our farm in. Set up a facility for your village. Let's try the school. I think it wants us to do a school next. There we go. So what's nice is that during this tutorial, it actually shows the students with the information that it's providing, um, kind of why those things need to be done. There are no books in the school. Oh, we're running out of well, we need books in the village. Okay, so we need to purchase some books, which means we need to go to the market. So we need to sell something in order to purchase some books. We've got an awful lot of tools, so let's sell a few tools so that we can purchase some books. There we go. All right, the upgrade button provides technological upgrades. Try upgrading. Oh, what am I doing? I think I'm upgrading. Upgrading the huts, okay. So we're gonna upgrade over here, and we're gonna upgrade our huts. And you can see that it sort of takes them from being shanties to being brick and uh, mortar structures. Technology upgrades provide better buildings. So again, we have some information up there. Thus, they're usually helpful in increasing the prosperity of a village, so upgrade your school. So let's try and upgrade the school. And again, these are all things that the students have the opportunity to do. And if they see these levels dropping, then they'll have a chance to go through and quickly decide with their partner what do they need to do. Do they need to buy books for the school? Do they need to upgrade the school? And what's the next thing they need to do on the list? People are lying idle in the village. You need a workshop so that they have something to do. Okay, so let's build a workshop. Your village has grown considerably. Now we need to build a hospital. All right, so now we need medicine for that hospital, so we need to go to the market and buy some medicine. So let's see, we have quite a few tools that we are making in our workshop. So we're gonna sell some tools 
and that'll give us some more money so that we can buy some books. Oh, we need to have medicine. Did I buy the wrong thing? I think I might have. Whoops. Market. Oh, close that. So you can see my kids are much much better at moving through this much more quickly than I am. <laughs> there you go. Your village has now taken the first step towards prosperity. Congratulations. <laughs> Nice work with the setting up of the new village. I'm very impressed. Thanks, but I wonder if you're capable enough to work without my guidance now that you've learned the basics of building a village. I'll leave you the responsibility of the village for the next month while I go to your cousin's sister's wedding. So then you move into the rest of the game and you're actually playing the game and you have your objective, don't let anything drop below 35, so you immediately have to start building your huts and getting them on the board. And it moves at a much quicker pace. Oh, you don't have any more materials, then you need to go and sell something. So now we're moved into the game and we need to actually sell some fruits, sell some rice, so that we can buy some bricks, and buy some tools, and now we can go back in and buy our, do our building, and already I'm out of luck. So, because something here, oh, we had education and training, actually education dropped below 35. So you can see it's, it's a game that ends up moving very, very quickly when the students actually start playing it. But then they get to hit escape and start it all over again from where they left off. And they can keep trying to succeed and trying to figure out what is the right combination and how quickly they need to move and what they need to do. So it's, it's really a, a blast. My kids were having a, a really good time with it. Um, and they were much, much more proficient with figuring it all out. Uh, and moving through the game than I am. So I'm hoping that this will be a really exciting uh, activity for the students in, in Olivia's fifth grade class as well.